Hello everyone, welcome to Divya Ganita. In this video, let us discuss the KCET 2024 question paper. So the first question is, two finite sets have M and N elements respectively. The total number of subsets of first set, which is nothing but 2 power M. Because we know that number of subsets is given by 2 power N. So the first set has M elements means 2 power M which is equal to 56 more than the total number of subsets of second set. So 56 plus 2 power n. For this problem, instead of taking the actual root, we can go through the options. That is, substitute the value of m and n in this equation and check for which value the equation satisfies. If we take option a, if we take 7 and 6, 2 power 7 which is 128 that is equal to 56 plus 2 power 6 is 64 which is not equal. Therefore, the option A does not satisfy. If we take option B, 2 power 5 is 32 which is 32 is not equal to 56 plus 2 power 1 means 2. So, that will also not satisfy. If we take 6 and 3, 2 power 6 is 64 which is equal to 56 plus 2 cube means 8. So, this condition is satisfied. Therefore, the answer is option C. Right? Next question. They have given a quadratic equation but instead of x, they have given greatest integer of x. No need to worry. Just solve the equation as we simplify for quadratic equation. If we factorize this, then we get Greatest integer of x minus 3 into greatest integer of x minus 2, which is equal to 0. That means either greatest integer of x equal to 3 or greatest integer of x equal to 2. If greatest integer of x equal to 3, that means x belongs to the interval 3, 4, which is closed at 3 and open at 4. Similarly, greatest integer of x equal to 2 means x belongs to the interval 2 comma 3 again closed at 2 and open at 3. If we combine these two terms then we get the answer as option B that is from 2 to 4. Next if in two circles arcs of same length subtend angles 30 degree and 78 degree at center then ratio of their radii is Similar questions were there in first year trigonometry. So, to solve this, they have given arc lengths are equal. We know the formula that is L is equal to R theta. They have given L1 is equal to L2. Therefore, we get R1 theta1 is equal to R2 theta2. That means, we want the ratio R1 by R2 which will be equal to theta2 by theta1. Theta 2 is 78 divided by theta 1 means 30. If we simplify this, the answer will be 13 by 5. That is option B. Next question. If triangle ABC is right angled at C, that means we have a right angle triangle and we have the right angle at C. These are other two angles A e and B. Let us assume the side which is opposite to A as A and opposite to B as B and opposite to C as C. Then tan A plus tan B is equal to tan theta is nothing but opposite by adjacent. Therefore tan A will be A by B. Similarly tan B will be B by A. If we simplify this, if we take the LCM, we get A square plus B square divided by AB. As it is a right angle triangle, we get C square by AB. That is option C. Next one. The real value of alpha for which 1 minus sin sin alpha divided by 1 plus 2i sin alpha is purely real. The term is purely real means the imaginary part must be equal to 0. So, to find what is the imaginary part, we have to convert it into the form of A plus IB. Right? Then we will get imaginary part. Then we consider that part as 0. So, to convert it into A plus IB form, we have to rationalize the denominator. 
that is multiply and divide by take the term as it is for this we have to multiply and divide by 1 minus 2i sin alpha if we multiply it then the numerator will be 1 minus 3i sin alpha then if we multiply these two terms minus into minus it will be plus but i square is there therefore we get minus 2 sin square alpha divided by denominator will be 1 plus sin square 1 plus 4 sin square alpha because again i square will come i square value is minus 1 therefore it will become 1 plus 4 sin square alpha now as i told before we have to consider the imaginary part as 0 here we have the imaginary part of course including the denominator but if you are taking it as 0 then if numerator is 0 then the value will be equal to 0 therefore the imaginary part is 0 means minus 3 sin alpha value is 0 minus 3 sin alpha 0 means sin alpha will be equal to 0 then alpha is the multiple of pi that is nothing but n pi where n belongs to z actually but they have given here n therefore the best option is option c the length of rectangle is 5 times the breadth. So, L is equal to 5 into V. If the minimum perimeter, we know that perimeter is 2 into length plus breadth, which is greater than or equal to 180, because the minimum is 180, it can be greater than 180. We have L is equal to 5B, therefore L plus B will be 6 that means 2 into 6b which is greater than or equal to 180 which implies breadth is greater than or equal to 15 that is option b next question which is depending on the combination permutation and combination in that com in combination we have a formula that is ncr plus ncr minus 1 which is equal to n plus 1 cr. We have to use this formula repeatedly to solve this question. Here we have 45c3 plus 45c4 which is again in this form. If we add this we get 46c4. If we combine it with 46c3 we get 47c4. Again if we combine with 47c3 we get 48c4 similarly combine it with 48 we get 49 similarly if we combine it with 49c3 so the answer will be 50c4 that is option a next question in the expansion of 1 plus x power n this is the expansion will be 1 plus nc1 into x which is nx plus nc2 into x square that is n into n minus 1 divided by 2 factorial into x square plus nc3 that is n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 divided by 3 factorial into x cube and so on. The terms will continue. They have given c1 by c0. So c1 by c0 which is n plus 2 into c2, 2 into c2 means n into n minus 1 by 2 factorial divided by c1 means n. So, 2, 2 will get cancelled, n, n will get cancelled, we are left with just n minus 1. Similarly, let us check for next term, that is 3 into c3, this should be c2, not just 2, c3 by c2. C3 is n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 divided by 3 factorial which is nothing but 3 into 2 factorial divided by n into n minus 1 divided by 2 factorial. So 2 factorial, 2 factorial cancel, 3, 3 cancel, n, n minus 1, we are left with just n minus 2. So the terms are getting decreased one by one. Therefore the last term will be 
that means we are adding the natural numbers from 1 to n which is nothing but n into n plus 1 by 2 that is sum of first n natural numbers is n into n plus 1 by 2 therefore answer is option a next if sn stands for sum of n terms of a gp we know the formula of sn that is sn is equal to a into r power n minus 1 divided by r minus 1 we have to find the ratio of sn is to s2n so divided by s2n will be a into in place of n substitute 2n minus 1 divided by r minus 1 so a r minus 1 will get cancelled r power n minus 1 divided by now we have r power 2n that can also be written as r power n whole square right so that will be in the form a square minus b square a square minus b square is nothing but a minus b into a plus b therefore we can write r power n minus 1 into r power n plus 1 so r power n minus 1 will get cancelled the answer will be option b next question if arithmetic mean and geometric mean of roots of quadratic equation we don't know the roots let us assume it as alpha and beta then arithmetic mean is nothing but alpha plus beta by 2 which is equal to 5 that means alpha plus beta is equal to 10 similarly geometric mean means root alpha beta equal to 4 that means alpha into beta equal to 60 then the general form of quadratic equation is given by x square minus alpha plus beta into x plus alpha into beta which is equal to 0. If you substitute the values the answer is option B. Next question. The angle between the lines. Two lines are given but they are given in different forms. For one line they have given the equation. For another line they have given the points. If we have the equation then the slope of the line. For both the lines we have to find the slope. Slope of first line is calculated by minus a by b which will be minus 1 because minus 1 by 1 that is minus 1 and the slope of second line is calculated by the formula y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 right. So y2 minus y1 means 4 minus 1 that is 3 divided by minus 3 minus 1 which will be minus 4. Then for angle between two lines we have the formula tan theta is equal to modulus of m2 minus m1 divided by 1 plus m1 m2. If we substitute the values m2 that is 3 by minus 3 by 4 minus of minus it will become plus divided by 1 plus minus 1 into minus 3 by 4 which will be 3 by 4. If we simplify this the LCM will be 4 minus 3 plus 4 which will be 1 by 4 divided by if we take the LCM in the denominator it will be 4 plus 3 that is 7 by 4. 4 4 will get cancelled tan theta is equal to 1 by 7 or theta is equal to tan inverse of 1 by 7. This will be the answer that is option C. Next question they have given the focus and directrix of the equation of parabola. Focus means it is nothing but a comma 0 therefore value of a is 6 and the equation of parabola is y square is equal to 4x. Focus is positive and directrix is x is equal to minus 6 means equation is y square is equal to 4x. Therefore the answer will be option a. This is one part of KCET 2024. Next part and next set of questions will be discussed in the next video. For more such videos, do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.